Hi there and welcome to Laugh So Create. My name is Rebecca. I just want to say welcome if you're returning. Also welcome and I'm glad that you made it back. Today I will be showing you how to make these little vinyl pouches and the reason why I came up with this design is because I wanted something that I could store the fat quarters and fabrics and that would be somewhat pr protected from fur, dust, I have pets, so. And trying to make a decision or look at fabrics, it's much easier to pull these bins down than it is to sort through the stacks of fabric. When I pull fabrics out, then they fall on the floor, get all disorganized, and then I have to refold them. So this is just a fun and attractive way to organize fabrics. You could actually use these for so many different things. You could use it in your sock drawer or even to store makeup. Another idea would be to make one for a nursery to hold diapers. Fun thing about this project is that I used a bias binding and I actually color coordinated it to the fabrics to keep in a particular bin. So this one's green for green fabrics, the yellows, one for the reds down here. They do come together really fast and you don't need a lot of supplies. You can make them in a variety of sizes. So it's time to get creative and let's get started with the supplies that you'll be needing today for this project. Okay, so if you run out of vinyl, don't have any around, hang on a sec. So if you have one of these bedspread holders laying around and you're done with it, I'm gonna cut this vinyl and use this vinyl. This one's got a built-in pocket. I can use that for something else. We have vinyl. Okay, so mine has a little label on it. <laughs> it says decorative pillows, but I'm not bothered by that at all. It's useful to have a rotary mat and cutter as well as some rulers. What I found helpful for marking on the vinyl is a Sharpie pen. It wipes away easily. Then you'll also need some fabric for the bias binding and handles. A measuring tape is also useful just in case you decide to make a different size then you can measure around the perimeter to identify how much of the bias binding you'll be needing. Some clips are also useful because we are dealing with vinyl. You don't want to use pins and puncture your vinyl. You'll need a sewing machine and thread and the stitch length that I will be using throughout is a three millimeter stitch length, an ironing board or a pressing mat, an iron, some snips, and some utility scissors to cut your vinyl, preferably non-fabric scissors. You'll also need some pipe cleaners. Now I only have green, but if you're dealing with a lighter fabric for your bias binding, you may wanna go with a white pipe cleaner. And the pipe cleaner is to help with the support. Okay, so the first step is cutting out your rectangle of vinyl. And you're going to, to get this size of a tote, you're going to cut your vinyl piece 14 inches wide by 16 inches in height. Grab your ruler and your Sharpie. Start by marking out a four inch by four inch square in each of the corners. And the Sharpie just wipes away. And then you'll take your scissors and cut out the four by four square and save these squares because you can make other things. Okay, so now that all of the corners are cut out, it's time to grab your clips and you're going to take each of the corners and match them together and clip them. Okay, so when you're done, you'll have a little box and then you I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch at about a quarter of an inch with a three millimeter stitch length and do that for all four sides. Then once you've done that, you're gonna take the hair dryer, warm up the vinyl and then flip it inside out. And then we're gonna go back around and stitch again 
by folding it back on itself. So you'll encase the initial edge or seam that you have made, sort of like a French seam. And I like to stop just short of the corner and back stitch. For all four sides. Okay, so once you have the little box completed, it's time to move on to the bias binding. So to figure out the length that is needed, you're going to measure around the perimeter of the box and then you're going to add half an inch. Reason being is that you want the overlap uh, to be a quarter of an inch on either side and we're going to stitch down at a quarter inch seam allowance and that way it'll be nice and flush. So 26 and a half and two inches in width is what I'm going to start with. Okay, so to prepare your bias binding, you'll take your piece of fabric and have the selvages parallel to each other and you're going to cut in a 45 degree angle and make the strip two inches wide and the reason why you want it on a 45 degree angle is because you'll get more stretch which is important when you're trying to go around like corners another option if you don't want to make your own bias binding you can just get store-bought binding so then the next step is to take it to the ironing board and you are going to press the bias binding in half and then once you've pressed it in half, you're going to fold the edges in towards the center and press like so. And then finally, you're going to press it together so that you get that edge. Grab your bias binding. And you're going to start clipping the bias binding onto the edge of the container. When you get to the corner, you can kind of play with it by kind of straightening it out. I'm gonna continue all the way around. So at the corners, you can do a mitered. If you need to, you can kind of fold the fabric. You just want it to look tidy and consistent on all four sides. And here is better to overclip than <laughs> underclip. And again, you're just making sure that that doesn't happen. You want the edges to match up. Next, take the edge and turn it under and press it by a quarter of an inch. You could finger press it or if you have your iron handy, you could just press it. You're just trying to get a line so that you know where to stitch. Okay, so once you have that, then you want to take the other side and put the folded side over the piece that has the extra, lay it flat, and then mark the edge so that I know that that is where my stitching line is going to meet the stitching line over here. So I'm going to go beyond that marking that I just did by a quarter of an inch and cut it. Okay, so then I'm gonna turn it and also press it. Again, finger pressing or doing it with the iron. Flip them over so the right sides are facing each other. Match up those press lines or you could pin it. It's not very far so um, I still have those marks, so I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and stitch along that pressed crease. Press it open, and I can just finger press it. And then tuck it back in. And I'm folding it closed, matching the rest of the bias. It's time to just clip the rest of it down. For the handles, you'll grab the remaining piece of binding and you'll want a piece that is 12 inches in length, 2 inches in width, and I'm going to follow the same procedure by pressing it the same way as you did this binding. And then you're going to cut the 12 inch piece in half so you'll have two 6 inch pieces for either side for the handles. 
take them to the sewing machine and stitch down either side at a scant 1 8 of an inch from the edge. Okay, so both of the little straps are complete. Next, time for pipe cleaners. I'm going to get a pipe cleaner and just an approximation, just cutting the pipe cleaners to the length without cutting my finger. <laughs> so I'll need two of those. If you hear something like strange, <laughs> my shepherd right outside my door chewing on his favorite, on her favorite toy. Okay, and then measuring the short end. Cutting another one. This is why it's good to use your non-fabric scissors for this. All right, then the next step is just slipping these in underneath the bias binding and pushing it up. Okay, so I just wanted to let you know, I finished this bin and just some suggestions. If you're using the pipe cleaners, I would recommend that you put like some masking tape or maybe even double it back. That way the sharp ends won't poke through the fabric, which is an issue I had here. So glad I could learn this lesson and pass it on to you guys. But if you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it did poke through there. And clipping, making sure that the edges match. And the short end and repeat all the way around. Okay, so I've inserted the pipe cleaners in. All right, then I'm going to take the straps and I'm going to insert it about an one inch in from the edge. It's up to you where you want it, but as long as you're just consistent with it. Then I fold it up and clip it again. Bring it over to the other side and I'm going to insert it up again an inch from the edge. And then press it up. And so when you top stitch along this, it'll catch the handles. Repeat it on the other side. Okay, so all that is left to do is take it over to the sewing machine and stitch all the way around. About an eighth of an inch in, taking care not to sew over the pipe cleaner. And then when you get to the corners, if you want to make a little mitered corner, you can. If you want to, you can backstitch over the handles to provide extra support. And you can use a stiletto to help guide it if need be. Okay, then you can use the hair dryer and shape it a little bit. And you're done. 